As Russian troops move to secure the Donbass region in Ukraine, the port city of Mariupol lies in ruins with thousands of people still trapped inside. Some Eastern European nations are partnering up to reduce Russia's pressure on the gas market and end the EU's dependence on the Russian supply. Pope Francis issues a new mandate to his Sex Abuse Advisory Commission to open special victim welcome centers and audit the Church's progress on fighting abuse. The United Nations are looking to broker an evacuation of civilians from the ruins of Mariupol. According to the local mayor, the situation at the Azov-style steelworks is dire. Around 3,000 people are still holed up at the plant. 2,000 of those are Ukrainian defenders. And around 100,000 people remain trapped at the seaport. The Ukrainian president says what's left of the city is shocking. In the city, which used to be one of the most developed in the region, there is simply a Russian concentration camp among the ruins. The rules of the occupiers in the part of Mariupol, that it's unfortunately under their control at the moment, do not differ much from what the Nazis did in the captured territories in Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, the Pentagon's press secretary, John Kirby, accuses Russian President Vladimir Putin of brutality and depravity. It's difficult to look at the... Sorry. It's difficult to look at some of the images and imagine that any well-thinking, serious, mature leader would do that. <clears throat> so I can't talk to his psychology, but uh, I think we can all speak to his depravity. However, Russian President Vladimir Putin said his main focus is to ensure Russia's security and provide his people in the Donbass with aid. He made his comments whilst chairing a meeting with the Russian Security Council on Friday. The number of people fleeing have dropped due to lack of humanitarian corridors. But those who manage to escape the Russian occupation go to Zaporizhia. Radio Liberty producer Vera Hirich died after a Russian missile strike hit the residential building where she lived in Kiev as the UN chief visited the capital. The editorial board of Radio Liberty extended its condolences to her family. Vitaly Klitschko, mayor of Kiev, said that 10 more people were injured in the Russian attack. Russia's defense ministry said it had carried out an airstrike only on factory buildings in the capital. At least seven journalists have been killed in Ukraine since the start of the conflict. A natural gas pipeline between the Greek-Bulgarian border should be ready by June. It's the European Union's latest efforts to ease the reliance on a Russian supply. The gas interconnector Greece-Bulgaria pipeline aims to complement the existing European network. It will provide the two countries and their neighbors access to new grid connections. The ICGB pipeline, which stands for Interconnector Greece Bulgaria, is a high pressure steel pipeline to transfer natural gas from the system of natural gas pipeline of Greece into the natural gas pipeline system of Bulgaria. Meanwhile, Bulgarian and Romanian leaders also announced plans to work together to reduce Russia's pressure on the gas market. The Bulgarian Prime Minister says they could take gas from Romania and send it towards Turkey and also back the other way. Bulgaria is also looking to Azerbaijan as a possible source of gas. And Poland and the Czech Republic will restart their talks on building the Stork 2 gas pipeline. The discussions were previously abandoned, but both countries are now open to energy cooperation. It follows the Czech Republic being more than 90% dependent on Russian gas.
Montenegro has a new pro-Western and pro-EU government that promises to speed up EU integration of the small and deeply divided Balkan country. But Montenegro still remains split between groups favoring pro-Western policies and those seeking closer ties with Serbia and Russia. The government of Prime Minister Dritan Abazovic won support from 45 lawmakers in the 81-member parliament. Pro-Serbian groups did not attend the session. This vote comes just weeks after the previous pro-Serbian government was ousted back in February. The vote concluded the process of the removal of former Prime Minister Zdravko Krivokovic, who came to power in 2020 with huge support of the Serbian Orthodox Church. He lost the confidence vote in early February. The term of the new government, as earlier announced, could be one year, which means that the early parliamentary election might be held in the spring of 2023. However, many people in the country think that this term could be extended. Stefan Goranovic, Euronews, Podgorica, Montenegro. The head of the EU's border agency confirmed he's stepping down on Friday following reports of misconduct and human rights violations. Fabrice Legeri was appointed to the head of Frontex in 2015 as the bloc was dealing with an influx of migrants. His resignation was revealed by several sources, including a journalist from Lighthouse Reports, an investigative organisation that highlighted accusations of pushbacks. The illegal practice of forcing back migrants who've reached EU territory, whether on land or at sea. Frontex says basically every time the same thing. They claim that they do not have to investigate on an action perpetrated by a, um, a European country. And all they can do is they provide their help in uh, this uh, operation. On the other hand, the Greek uh, government claimed that these allegations were not true, but did not provide any details about an, or any explanation uh, to explain why those people were found in a, in a life raft in the middle of the sea. In a statement, the Jerry said it seemed to him that the management board of Frontex had silently but effectively changed the mandate on which he was elected. The spokesman for the European Union denied the mandate had changed. Pope Francis hopes to audit progress on tackling abuse within the Catholic Church. The pontiff has given a new mandate to a sex abuse advisory commission, asking the members to work with bishops globally. It follows decades of revelations of priests raping and molesting children. For the first time, the Holy Father has placed the importance of child protection as a core of the Church's central government. We thanked him for his constant support and the Holy Father told us that the autonomy of the Commission is meant to ensure the integrity of its expertise and especially in its freedom to give advice to the Holy Father on these delicate matters. One of the Commission's biggest initial recommendations was a special Vatican tribunal to prosecute bishops who covered up for pedophiles, but it went nowhere, frustrating survivors. The Pope hopes by creating special welcome centers for victims, it could help answer long-standing complaints from individuals about the reports of abuse. City authorities in the Spanish capital Madrid have decided to cut the frequency of metro trains because of a soaring cost of electricity. The system used to cost them €120,000 a day for power, but it's gone up by over five times to 830000 there are also around 20% fewer passengers using the metro compared to pre-pandemic levels. Obviously, in a context in which the price per megawatt hour is so high, this measure, in addition to adapting supply to demand, will mean cost benefits for the Madrid metro. But the idea hasn't gone down well with opposition politicians in the city's local assembly. They're seeking a meeting with the president of the community of Madrid, Isabel Ayuso. This means one out of every 10 trains won't come, so there'll be 900 fewer trains per day, which means waiting time is going to go from three to seven minutes. Mrs Ayuso is effectively robbing the people of Madrid of 6,000 hours of life. The Madrid metro is one of the largest in Europe, with over 300 stations. Like many other countries, Spain is having to cope with soaring energy prices due to the recovery after the pandemic and made worse by Russia's invasion of Ukraine.